Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unbox coming at you today with a full review of the Samsung Chromebook Pro. Perhaps the most anticipated Chromebook ever, this device is deserving of all the hype. An interesting aspect ratio at three by two, pen input, quality build. This device is impressive on a lot of fronts and we wanna show you why. The Samsung Chromebook Pro will be available in April for $549, just $100 more than the ARM powered Chromebook Plus. It's thin, light, attractive, and made all of aluminum. With completely rounded edges, the device feels much thinner than it actually is. Set right next to this straight cut Asus Flip, you'd be forgiven for thinking Samsung's offering was actually thinner. It isn't really, but perception and feel go a long way when it comes to devices we predominantly interact with from a touch and sight point of view. If it looks and feels lighter, it kind of is. We'll talk about this throughout the review, but the choice to go with a three by two aspect ratio paints many of the design choices going on here. Mainly because of the boxier screen, there's plenty of room for a large trackpad and spacious keyboard despite the diminutive 12.3 inch size. Three by two also gives you more square inches of real estate versus 16 by nine. So the screen simply feels more spacious as well. Hinges are firm here and the convertible setups are sturdy and work well. And the overall aesthetic is clean and free from unsightly ports and vents. Across the bottom are just screws, feet and speaker ports. For being so thin at 0.55 inches and so light at 2.38 pounds, the build feels quite sturdy, not giving much bow or flex when pressure is applied to either half of the device. My only gripe is a slight flex in the middle of the keyboard, but I had to put some real pressure there to notice it and it was never apparent in normal day-to-day -day use. Port selection is limited, similar to the Asus Flip, giving users access to two USB-C ports, a headphone microphone jack, micro SD card slot, and the already famous pen. We'll talk more about the pen in a few minutes. This port layout will likely become pretty familiar in the Chromebook market, given that USB-C is just so good at everything. The days are coming sooner than later when we'll live in a fully USB-C world, but we aren't quite there yet. Adapters and dongles will be in play for the short term to get things like external displays going. Luckily, USB-C docking ports from Samsung and Asus do the job just fine and work with Chromebooks exactly as you'd expect. The downward firing speakers are fair, but not great. Few laptop speakers are, but these do a decent job of projecting sound in any layout almost seeming to allow some sound to radiate up through the keyboard as well. Even when covered up completely, sound still comes out loud and clear. The display is probably the shining star for the Chromebook Pro and Plus, and it's insane. 2400 by 1600 pixels across 12.3 inches makes for 235 pixels per inch and razor sharp everything. Chrome OS has been scaling like this since the Pixel, basically rendering everything at a 200% clip. So out of the box, your resolution is actually set to 1200 by 800, and the scaling is just fantastic. With this setup, everything's a bit larger and more touch-friendly than anything I've used up to this point from a Chromebook perspective. This thing is made for touch-enabled Android apps. And I'd be remiss not to mention the crazy brightness here as well. 400 nits. That's brighter than any MacBook up into the very latest version and as bright as both pixels. No environment will give this thing any issues regardless of the glossy screen. Viewing angles are superb as well. Colors pop and the bezels are nice and small minus that bottom one. I'm guessing with convertibles, this is where lots of the tech hides. Almost every convertible has a large bottom bezel. I'd love for that to eventually go away. Still, I can't say enough about how good this screen is. It simply makes me want to use the Samsung Chromebook Pro for just about anything that I can. Moving on to input devices like the keyboard, trackpad, and pen, not everything is perfect. Granted, the things I have to say about the input methods aren't exactly a knock against the device. They are, however, deserving of a few comments and your consideration if you're thinking about buying this thing. The keyboard, well, it's a bit odd. Due to the three by two aspect ratio and the more square screen and device shape, the keyboard is actually laid out a bit different. Basically, take a full-size keyboard and shave off about half the width of the keys on both the left and right side, and you can imagine what we're dealing with here. Everything is where it should be, but those outer keys take some getting used to. The margin for error is just simply smaller. After a few days, I didn't have much issue at all. The travel is good and clickiness feels great. Additionally, the keys are subtly cupped to hug your fingers and typing actually feels really great. There is no backlighting, much to the disappointment of many of you, and there's no indication this will change down the road. So if that's a deal breaker, I'm afraid this device probably won't cut it for you. For me, it's a small omission, so I wasn't really that concerned about it. The trackpad is fantastic. I've looked pretty hard at it and I'm under the impression that it is glass. Oil resistance is great, and the surface stays smooth for long, long periods of time. The click mechanism nails it as well, delivering the best trackpad performance I could possibly ask for. Multi-finger gestures work just as expected, responding each and every time I called on them. Finally, there's the pen. 
utilizing Wacom's EMR tech, the Chromebook Pro and Plus both put all the magic in the screen. And what this means for you is that the pen needs no battery and is relatively inexpensive to replace. Because it's smaller size, it can be stowed inside the device, giving the pen a simple, easy place to live when not in use. When put to use, the experience is still a bit of a mixed bag. Google Keep does well with responsiveness, but I had a better time taking notes in Microsoft OneNote because of the lined paper option. Overall, the pen is very precise, but if it's moving too quickly, the perceived lag is still a bit off-putting. Google is touting that Chrome OS is utilizing machine learning algorithms to actually detect where your pen is headed next to reduce lag. We'll withhold full judgment on that as the device that we are reviewing is locked to the beta channel. As this thing begins to ship out, everything's moving along in stable channel, perhaps this will actually behave a little better. When pulling the pen out of its slot, a small icon appears and then dock and notifications, giving users a few cool tricks with the stylus that include a screen capture, screen region capture, laser pointer, magnifier, and just to create a new note. One of the really useful options is taking a screen grab and immediately beginning to annotate that pic in Google Keep. It's really come in very handy for me. As time goes on, I'd expect these options to expand. Internally, we're met with the Core M3 processor paired up with four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. And while that's plenty for a Chromebook and the thing gets around just fine, we have to consider the fact that this thing is pushing a ton of pixels with this beautiful display. And so from time to time, that causes a bit of lag here and there. Don't let that alarm you. And likely, eventually as Chrome OS continues to get updated, most of that lag is likely to disappear. Battery life has been really good as well, delivering eight to nine hours of use on a charge. Sure, if you crank the screen up to 100%, the battery does take a hit, but the great thing about this screen is the fact that you really only need about 50 to 60% brightness in most environments to feel plenty satisfied while using it. The new Samsung Chromebooks are built from the ground up with Android apps in mind. We just saw Chrome OS 56 launch this week along with the Play Store access on Stable Channel for some newer devices. Which other devices will get the Play Store and the Stable Channel at this point is unclear, but Samsung has made it very clear the Android app support is at the heart of this device and apps on the Stable Channel are basically guaranteed at launch. With that in mind, I'll say that the Android experience is a bit better on this device than others, mainly due to the fantastic screen, its 3x2 layout, and the device's deft weight. There's still work to be done for sure, and until we see Android Nougat, its resizable apps, I don't think the whole experience is going to come out of that beta feel. It works, but there are nagging issues here and there that still make Android apps feel not quite finished. Running Android apps will get much better over the next few months as we are now moving into the refinement period of the Play Store. And I think Samsung has a clear vision of this device being the absolute best at this very thing. With the screen, weight, size, and pen, I think that could very well be the case a few months from now. So all in all, this isn't a perfect offering from Samsung and no device really is. But what they've done here is get certain parts right and they've gotten them so right that it makes this device something you want to pick up, something you desire to use uh, on a daily basis. I've got a couple of Chrome books and boxes and stuff around the house and every time I wanted to use a device, I wanted to use the Samsung. And perhaps it was the mesmerizing display, which is amazing, or perhaps it was being able to have the pen when I needed it or the convertible form factor that was thin and light enough to feel like a tablet. I'm not sure, but the combination of really good stuff that Samsung got right, they got so right that it makes me want to use this device more than any other device that I have. And I think in the end, that's the win. I don't think you have to get everything perfect in order for it all to work. You just have to get the right stuff really, really right. And Samsung has done so with this device. Guys, if you like this one, hit that like button below, subscribe, and until next time, we'll see you.